Hello, and welcome to episode 11 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Legion painting series. In this episode we're going to paint Han Solo from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Legion. Han Solo has a wonderfully dynamic pose, and a sculpt that I feel nicely captures the look of this lovable rogue. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I've chosen to prime the figure in black, followed with some zenithal highlights sprayed from above. However, a plain prime in grey or white would also be fine. We'll then apply our base colours, taking care to pick out the yellow tuxedo stripes, and I'll also be creating some quick tonal variation for the hair with a little wet blending. Next I'll be using some shade to add some depth to the recesses, and also to create the camouflage pattern on the duster coat. We can then provide some highlights, and I'll be focusing my attention on the skin, as well as providing a high contrast look for the boots. The finishing touches will include adding a spot of weathering, as well as providing a scenic base. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin with some Bugman's Glow, and as usual I'm thinning my paints with a few drops of water. Next I'm going to use some ivory to paint the eyes. I'm doing this now because the eyes are quite deep set, and will almost certainly need some correcting with the skin tone, which is much easier to do at this stage rather than later. I'm now using the Bugman's Glow to trim the eyes back. We can now dot in some pupils, and I'm mixing a slightly bluish grey tone for this, with some black, white and dark sea blue. Any dark grey tone would be fine however. And I'm now making some final corrections with the skin tone. Moving on to the clothes, I'm now painting the shirt with the ivory. This may need a couple of layers if you're painting over a dark coloured prime. I'm now mixing some dark sea blue into some black in a roughly 1 to 2 ratio, and using this to paint the waistcoat, the gun and the boots. I'm applying this thinly enough to the waistcoat and the gun to allow some natural variation in tone to occur. For the belt, I'm using Mornfang Brown, darkened and desaturated with a little black. For the metallic details on the belt, I've chosen a non-metallic approach, and I'm providing a base tone of Celestra Grey. You may of course prefer to use a silver metallic paint here instead if you like. As usual, I like to do any necessary tidying up as I go along. For the yellow stripe on the trousers, I'm going to first lay down an undercoat of pure white. This is just to ensure the yellow shows up as brightly as possible. I'm now painting over this with Flash Gits Yellow, which I'm lightening and desaturating slightly with a little white. We 
We can now paint the rest of the trousers and I'm using Mornfang Brown mixed with some Rhinoxide and some black. We can then use this to break the yellow stripe up into smaller segments, aiming to keep them as evenly spaced as possible. I'm now going to paint the hair and I've chosen to wet blend some USA Olive Drab for the darker tones into some Talon Sand for the lighter areas towards the top of the head. I'm first mixing an intermediate tone to help with the transition. I'm beginning with the USA Olive Drab which I'm applying to the lower portion of the hair. I'm now using the intermediate tone for the mid band which we can loosely mix with the previous colour. and I'm now applying the pure tan on sand to the top of the head. I'm now just neatening up the join where the hair meets the face. We can tie things together and articulate the texture with a shade in a moment. Finally I'm going to paint the duster coat using deck tan. And for the inside of the coat which I want to appear more shadowed, I'm going to mix in some USA Olive Drab and some black. Here you can see me mixing the darker tone. And I'm now painting the entire outside of the coat with the deck tan. I might ordinarily be tempted to block in the shadows on the back here at this stage, but I've chosen to apply them later with some shade once we've applied the camo pattern. I'm now using the darker tone to paint the inside. I'm also using this to define the gap beneath the collar on the back. With the base colours complete, we're now ready to add some shade. I'm now going to create a patchy camouflage pattern for Hans Duster Coat. I'm doing this quite simply by applying patches of neat Agwax Earthshade and Athonian Camo Shade. I'm starting with the Athonian Camo Shade and applying the shade in discrete patches. I'm now doing the same with the Agwax Earthshade, which I'm placing roughly in between, or at times overlapping, the patches of green. We want to ensure that we're also leaving a fairly even distribution of patches of pure deck tan. And I'm now continuing around the rest of the coat. Once dry, additional patches of shade can be added until we have a look that we're happy with, bearing in mind that we'll be tying things together with a global shade in a moment. I'm now going to shade the skin with some Reichland Flesh Shade. 
This is mostly to help darken places like the gaps between the fingers and the mouth, as well as to help define the border between the hairline and the face. I'm taking care to avoid the eyes, however. Next, I'm going to mix four brushes of Lamian Medium with one each of Nuln Oil and Lagwax Earthshade using my size 2 brush. This should create quite a delicate wash which we can use to shade the shirt. I'm now adding three more brushes each of the Nuln Oil and Lagwax Earthshade to create a heavier mix. I'm using this to firstly shade the hair, which should do a nice job of bringing out the texture. I'm also using this for the coat, as well as the belt and the trousers. Notice that I'm also happy for this to tone down the yellow stripe. Once dry, we can use the shade selectively to boost the shadows on the coat in a couple of layers, most notably for the area beneath the arms. We're now ready to add the highlights. I'm now going to highlight the skin, and as usual for the hero figures, I'm going to put in a little more time and effort when compared to the regular troops. So, just as with General Veers, I'm going to be augmenting my standard trilogy of skin tones, with the addition of some dark sea blue for the chin area, and a little red for the nose and cheeks. I'm starting with some Bugman's Glow, which I've lightened with a little Cadian Flesh Tone. This is going to cover most of the non-recessed areas of the skin. Here I'm adding a touch of dark sea blue to help create a cooler tone for the chin and upper lip. I'm now adding some additional Cadian Flesh Tone. Here I'm adding a touch of Evil Sun Scarlet to some Cadian Flesh Tone to create a more reddish tone for the nose and cheekbones. And here once again I'm adding a little dark sea blue to highlight the chin. I'm now brightening things further with the addition of some Kislev Flesh. I 
At each stage, I'm still subtly varying the tone with the addition of my dark sea blue and red for the chin and upper face respectively. Here I'm using some Cadian flesh tone to highlight the lower lip. The brush I'm using here is a Rosemary & Co size 2. Although it's lost some weight over time, it's retained a nice fine point and still holds the paint well. For the brightest highlights I'm also mixing in a little white. I'm focusing these mostly on the top of the nose and the cheekbones. This is my lightest highlight tone. I'm now going to strengthen the definition of the eyes by carefully placing some eyebrows using USA Olive Drab. And here's my final highlight for the chin. Moving on to the rest of the model, I'm now using the original ivory to provide a simple highlight for the shirt. All I'm doing here is cleaning up some unwanted pooling of shade near the neck and hitting the main raised ridges in the fabric. I'm now going to mix some Mournfine Brown and XV88 and use this to highlight the belt. This can be done quite roughly in order to achieve a more worn and textured look. I'm now using pure XV88. And I'm going further still by mixing in a little white. We can then integrate the layers of scratchy highlights with some Seraphim Sepia or Agrax Earthshade. For the metal detailing on the belt, I'm going to first darken the original Celestra Grey with some black and use this to darken the underside of the cylindrical canister. And I'm now mixing in some white to highlight the top side. I'm also brushing this towards the lower half of the belt buckle to create a rough gradient. I'm now using almost pure white to add some final glinting highlights. I'm not pushing things too far on the buckle however as I want the metal to appear quite dull. It's a small detail but I'm now painting the pistol grip with the original dark brown base tone we mixed for the trousers. and I'm brightening this with the addition of some Mournfang Brown.
for the boots, you could achieve a fine tabletop standard by simply applying a gloss varnish if you like. I've chosen to provide some manual highlights however to allow me full control over the placement of highlights. So I'm simply adding white to the original dark sea blue and black base tone in several stages just as we did for general veers. You can see I'm going for a strong T-shaped off-center highlight on the front of Han's left boot. I'm going all the way up to pure white to create a shiny appearance. I've chosen not to highlight the waistcoat because, being a matte black fabric, I think it looks fine as it is. I'm going to use the same grayscale to highlight the pistol, but I'm first painting the tip in a lighter tone. I'm once again highlighting all the way up to pure white. Here I'm adding a few scratches and rough glints of reflection to create a more weathered and battle-worn look. For the trousers, which I want to remain pretty dark, I'm just slightly increasing the amount of Mornfang brown in the original base tone to create a fairly gentle highlight. Finally, I'm going to add a few highlights to the hair with some Talon sand. And I'm now lightening this with a little white. With the highlights complete, we're ready to add some finishing touches. This is entirely optional, but I've chosen to mix some Nagaroth Knight into some USA Olive Drab and use this to incorporate some purple tones into some of the shadows. I'm applying this quite thinly to the darker sections of the hair. The purple should barely register, but I feel adds a little extra nuance and interest and nicely complements the pale sandy colours on the model.
I've also chosen to brush this quite thinly into the shadows of the coat. Next I'm going to use some Castellan Green and USA Olive Drab to provide some darker weathering for the lower rim of the coat. I'm mostly stippling this on with an old brush. and I'm now using an Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil mix to deepen the shadows in between the raised ridges. Apart from applying a matte spray for protection, all that remains now is for me to provide a scenic base. As detailed in previous episodes, this means I'll be applying some basing paste, followed with a shade and some fine turf. I'm also gluing on some forest debris and I've chosen to add a few tufts of silflor grass. And this completes Han Solo. Thank you for watching. I hope you have found the video useful. Do please let me know if you have by liking the video and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss future episodes. Please note, you'll find a full list of paints and brushes used in the video description below, where you can also find links to where I can be reached on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Legion. Happy painting!